Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Julie and Julie is this gorgeous bag just here. Um, lovely size, not too big, not too small, it's quite boxy, it's, it's interesting actually um, and for the month of January you can tell I've surrounded myself with all things yellow and um, it's just what we do in January in my house. Uh, the first thing I tend to do is get a big bunch of daffodils and uh, in season out of season it doesn't matter to me and I'll have them on display because yellow in January makes me really happy. So the projects I'm doing today, um, Julie here, first of all we have got the yellow one but the second one I'm going to make has the tones of kind of mustard in it so you'll see as we go along. So um, with Julie, like I said she's a lovely little boxy bag, can you see how she looks? She's got a zippy pocket here at the front on the flap so if you want to pop your cards in there and have them to hand but safe they'll go in there um you might even get a very small phone in there but i don't don't sort of quote me on it um it's got d-rings on the side with tabs it's got a fabulous um bought handle here and i'll put the link for this particular handle um in the in the, all the details um got a magnetic closure at the front can you see it just sparkling there and i've used the same outer fabric um for the lining of the flap so I quite like the continuity of that you may want to use your lining fabric that's up to you so it's got a drawstring top um, it's very similar to one I made a couple of years ago in as much that we've got the drawstring top I think it was Millie um, and you can look, find that on my website um, but it actually it's quite spacious when we undo the drawstring so it's really it's quite useful so although it's it comes up quite small when you drew the drawstrings and what I suggest you do is to tuck the strings inside you don't want them sort of um, falling out the outside it looks untidy um, it's got a lovely lovely boxy bottom so a really nice it's a, just a quite a roomy little bag and um, perfect for the spring weather that's I know just around the corner fingers crossed and um, good for weddings that sort of thing depending on what sort of handle you put on it might even end up being your everyday bag because although I've put quite a ch chunky handle on this you could if you wanted to get something like a little chain like this that you can pop on and make it even more dressy and um, just try and make sure your hardware matches so that's like a sort of a, 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 a well it's a dull sort of gold it's not a bright gold so you perhaps want the hardware to match I'm using silver today which goes beautifully so that is Julie and I absolutely love her the fabric is awesome and it has like a foiling on it so it's made it really special so if I pop um, Julie there and then we can refer to her if we need to so I've got all my bits and pieces prepared and um, I've kind of gone ahead with one or two things so we'll go on the overhead just to see what I've done in advance so this is the outer flap so this is the flap that's going to go on the outside of your bag and you can see I've already drawn through the pattern and created my opening ready for the zip the zip will go in there if we turn it over you'll see that I've already um, folded that back and and actually I've stuck it with quilters tape but what, what I've done with my bag I've used two layers of a medium weight stabiliser because I wanted it to be fairly sturdy. So two layers is great or you could use a Decaville light um, but it's not quite so malleable as two layers of um, a medium iron-on interfacing. So there is my box made. Um, or my box opening so literally follow the guidelines on the pattern draw your box it's a half inch box obviously it's right in the center you're going to cut down the middle and you're going to cut your V's either side and on the pattern on the photographs you'll see how that's been done so that's the outer part so we're ready to put the pockets on and we'll do that next in the zip on the lining what I want you to do is to put a little bit of stabilizer where you're going to put the magnetic closure because that needs to be a little bit more stable than just your regular um, one layer of, of quilting cotton or whatever you're going to use um, and I do a zigzag I use a pinking shears so it kind of blends into the fabric a little bit more uh, but that's the position of where we're going to put our magnetic closure and again that's on the pattern 
so once we've done that we're kind of uh, ready to go I've got two pieces of pocket I've got an upper piece which is this part and I've got a lower piece which is that part now you will see a little bit of the outer piece and that's why I've got it in the same fabric you absolutely don't have to you could have it in your lining fabric if you want to so it means that when my pocket is placed there and I open up the zip you can see <laughs> it almost becomes invisible but you will have a zip there um, and I quite like that effect so that that again is up to you but these all fit with the line of the pocket so it all lines up beautifully and we'll, we'll do that now so the first thing we're going to do is use the lower half of the pocket. So it's the smaller piece that you're going to take first. You've got the upper piece, which is the piece that I've done in my outer fabric, and the lower piece, which is the smaller piece that I've done in my lining. So if we look on the overhead, that's my small, smaller piece here. You can see that it's, um, it's smaller than the upper piece. And um, I, what I want to do is attach my zip to the um, lower piece so let's just turn it so it's the same as the pattern photo that you have and what I want to do is I want to just make sure that I'm going to place my zip in the right place I don't particularly want to take my zip right up to the seams I want it to be a little either side and um, not not with a zip on so I'm just going to put my pattern over the top or my um, my opening so where I've marked here and here, I know that's where my opening starts and stops, but I want my zip to go just a little bit further than that. So what I can do is I can place it like that. And if I get a pin, we can pin that on. And we're going to stitch that on. And you can see that my zip is far longer than I need. You know what, I'm, I do do that. You know I do that. I mean, it just allows me to stitch the zip without having this um, zip tab, uh, zip slider in the way. We will need it in just a little while. But in the, in the time being, um, we're just going to um, stitch with it out of the way. We're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch all the way along. This is literally just to give you a little bit of stability when you're doing all the rest of your stitching. So we're going to change to the zipper foot. So let's just get that taken off. We'll put the zipper foot on. And to be honest, you don't really have to because this is such a um, small seam we're going to do, but it gives us that sort of peace of mind that we're nowhere near the, the teeth of the zip. So I'm going to stitch, like I said, about a half an inch, sorry, an eighth of an inch away from the uh, raw edge and the uh, zip tape. So just make sure my stitch length is on four, which I'm happy with. So all the way down to where I've made that other mark, which is there. I'll cut my threads. Okay, so now I've attached the lower pocket to the zip and both pieces are right side facing me. So the next thing we want to do now is to actually top stitch this part of the of the um, zip into the pocket, into the opening. So if we get our piece that's looking like that with our opening, we're just going to place that over the top. So let's just get that right. I want you to have a look at this. So I folded my fabric over. So there's my zip attached like that and I folded it out like that so now my zip is lying face up to me and the wrong side of my lining is showing and I'm just going to place my my letterbox opening over the top but what I want to do is to marry up these edges here so that's that's more important to me than anything else so I'm going to line those up and I'm going to pop a pin in just to hold all those layers in place because that's the most important thing I want to be able to make sure that I catch the lining nicely um, on the uh, fabric so fold all these over now what you could do 
is that you could use your um, uh, you could use a quilter's tape to hold this in place but I'm quite confident that this is all going to be sitting nicely on here and then we're just going to stitch the bottom line so if we bring this up and this is where I'm going to bring my zip slider in just trim that there we are so if I flip that over again <laughs> you can see once once the zip is open it doesn't make it um, doesn't make it too difficult to stitch just make sure everything is lined up so what you want is that the zip teeth to be right in the center of your opening so this is where if you're using quilter's tape it just sits perfectly there we go I'm happy with that so I'm going to pin that in place just there and once you've got that lined up in the center let's just close my zip you can see how that works there we go now I've got that in the center I'm going to stitch from there all the way down to there so you're just stitching from that corner to that corner but just make sure that your zip teeth stay in the center of your opening pop it under your machine again keep it all lined up um, I would be very wary about doing too many back stitches but um, maybe one or two just to secure that end stitch would be fine so just work your way along from the lower corner to the other lower corner from the right side to the left side when you come to the zip slider you should be okay it shouldn't get in your way but just keep your eye on it when you come to that other corner just do one or two back stitches that's all don't uh, don't overdo it so if I show you on that side camera there you can see that I've attached the zip I've top stitched from there to there that's all I've done and on the pocket side the pocket is in place as well and all that will be held down when we do the upper pocket so let's go on the overhead what we want to do with the upper pocket is we're going to put our right sides together so our lining and our outer piece or if you've got two pieces of lining they're going to go right sides together like that and you could you could pin that like that if you want to now or, or you can do what I'm going to do which is just as I did before I'm going to stitch my zip to my fabric so you need to flip it like that okay try and keep the sides of your pockets all lined up and I would pin it because we know that's the right place for it to be so I'm just going to pin it to hold it in place okay so all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to baste along here so it's, it's always tricky when the zips zip ends are open but I want to baste along here so I'm just going to um, baste again about an eighth of an inch all the way along just try and make sure your raw edges and your zip tape are lining up and that's just going to hold that upper pocket in place while and then we're going to top stitch it just as we did before so I'm going to keep my um, zip foot on um, I'm just going to move my zip slider just to start off with and just stitch along that tab not the tab the um, the zip uh, tape <laughs> and they'll come to a certain point when you need to move that zip slider out of the way so we're just literally basting this on so about an eighth of an inch is fine 
So if we look on the side camera now, that's what I want it to look like when you've done that. So if I take these pins out, because that was just literally holding that down for me, um, it'll look like that. So obviously that's upside down. But you've got your right side of your lining and the right side of your um, outer piece together. So it's right sides together. And all we've done is stitch the zip and the outer piece together along there. And if I fold that back, you can see how that looks. So a little bit of a Chinese puzzle, but it, it works a treat. So then what we do, if we flip that through to the front, all of these layers will, will stick together, uh, will lay, lay together nicely. We're now going to top stitch. So let's just get that zip slider out. There we go. So while with everything all lined up, I now want you to top stitch from that last corner you stitched up, across and down. I don't want you to stitch anywhere along here because otherwise you'll stitch your pocket together and you won't be able to use it, which wouldn't be very useful. So you're going from this bottom corner up, across and down. And again, do it with your um, zip, foot, zipper foot on. Just try and keep your pockets and everything lined up and by all means pin those together just to make sure that you've got them lined up. If, if they're a little bit out, that's okay. Try, try and keep them as best you can. So we'll pop it under the machine. I'll just get my slider out of the way again. So try and start where you left off. One back stitch only, or two max. And then we're going to top stitch around that opening. I'm going to move the slider back. And all I want to do is really, as I'm looking at it, and this is obviously where you might pin it, is just to get everything centralized. So all those, that zipper, the zipper teeth are sitting uh, right in the center of your opening. So right to the corner, put a little thread there. I'm just going to slip away. And then we're down across the zip teeth to where you just started. And then I'm just going to do one or two stitches and cut my threads. So let me show you on the side view. So there we go, what that looks like. So we've stitched across there, up the little tab bit there, across the top and down. And that gives us a lovely, lovely pocket. Now, if I open that up, you can see that the, the fabric that you're looking at is actually the outer fabric. Um, so it's uh, lovely and neat. Works a treat. So that's our, our pocket done, and that's, that's the front flap done, um, and we just need to put the magnetic closure in the lining. What we need to do now is to baste around all those layers just to hold them together. So I'll just change to my regular foot now. You're done with the zipper foot, you'll be pleased to know. What I would do before you stitch your edges together, your, your, what we're doing is stitching all those layers together, is just to make sure everything is lying flat. So even if you've got a little bit of um, pocket, not quite where you want it to be, that's fine. We'll just give it a little trim. I'm quite happy to do that. Just trim it up so all your layers are sitting nicely on top of each other. There we go, that's fine. So now I'm just going to stitch from about half an inch above the pocket all the way around that curved edge. Um, it's a basting stitch, so um, about an eighth of an inch is absolutely fine. And we're just going to whiz around just to hold the layers together. Because our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch throughout, 
You don't want uh, your basting stitches to be any more than a quarter of an inch, otherwise you'll see them. Okay. So that's my front flap completed. It looks gorgeous in this fabric, really super. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to put the magnetic closure in the lining piece. So um, this piece here. So I've got my magnetic closures handy and you need the thin part. So if we look on the overhead, let's just move the machine a little bit. There's always two parts to a magnetic closure. So I'll just go and I'll just get my, my mat, my protective mat for my desk. So the two parts are what I call fat and thin. The fat part goes on your bag. The thin part goes on the flap. You don't want the flap to be top heavy with a heavy metallic um, magnetic closure. So I'll pop that to one side. So from your pattern, mark out where your um, magnetic closure is going to go. Oh, I knew I had one there somewhere. You're going to get a central position and with your pen, you're going to mark where the little openings are. It's, these things are always made to be super, super useful. So you've marked the two positions there. I'm just going to put two holes in like that. And obviously it goes in on the front of the flap, not the rear. So that's it installed. The legs have gone through beautifully to see it shining there. And then what we do is pop the clasp on the back and then push these out. You can push them out or push them in. It doesn't really matter. Um, if because we've got that stabiliser there, um, you shouldn't be able to feel that from the front. It should be it should be fine and that, that feels that feels lovely. So before we actually pop these two pieces together, what I want you to do now is just to turn over these two edges by a quarter of an inch with your iron. Um, and the, the reason for that is once we've stitched these two together, we're going to turn these top edges in um, a quarter of an inch and top stitch ready for putting onto your bag. So if I get my little ironing mat, get that ready. <clears throat> but when you come to stitch them together, open up that quarter of an inch uh, fold. It's just there because it makes it so much easier once you've stitched it to have this quarter inch turned over. And although this is really stiff now with all the interfacing, it still will fold over fine. So it, this is just really giving it memory and it just makes it ever so much easier. Um, so give it a really nice press. Okay. So now we're doing right sides together with our two pieces. Make sure that your bottom seams are matching beautifully. Open up that those folds that you've just created and you're going to stitch all the way around. So open those up, match them up beautifully as best you can. Uh, pop some pins in if you wish or some quilters clips, whatever is, uh, is your choice. And we're going to stitch all the way around so you probably see better on this side so right sides together quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch from here if I do the pocket the right way from here all the way around to here and like I say don't forget to open up those folds even though we pressed them it's uh, we don't need them to be pressed now little back stitch it. Just be careful that your zip slider is not in the way. I'm just going to put my dual feed down. If, you, if you've got a walking foot or a dual feed, they are really useful 
for um, things like bag making where you've got lots of layers going on. So around those corners, try and keep that nice and smooth and we're coming back to work. Not where we started, but at the top. Little reverse stitch and cut. Okay, so there is our flap done. And I'm going to use my pinking shears just to trim that away. Take some of that bulk away. It really helps on curves. To, to, to use the pinking shears but also um, for things projects like this where you're making flaps for bags pockets all that sort of thing it really is um, quite useful to get your pinking shears um, out takes away all the bulk and also it can give you nice smooth corners um, another tip is to reduce your stitch length down to two if you're doing curves so now we've stitched the whole thing together. You can see what it looks like. There's the um, inner with the pocket. You can see where that's sitting and you can see the, the lining part where you've got the magnetic closure. Now we're going to top stitch this. And what I suggest you do is, first of all, make a really good job of pushing this out. <laughs> Um, and then I want you to top stitch the whole thing all the way around in one go. Use your pokey tool on your corners and push your corners out and just finger press them as you go. Um, because the heat of your hand will really help curve those corners. Okay. And then we'll get our iron, give that a little press. and then we'll top stitch. Now obviously um, I do all of my stitching pretty much with cream thread. Um, it just uh, works for just about everything that I stitch um, in the seams. Um, you may want to change your top thread now or your, and your bottom thread to match your fabric because obviously with a top stitch you, you are going to see it. So where we have turned those quarter inches over previously, um, you know what, it saves such a lot of time if um, you, because you've already done that pressing, it makes a lovely, lovely smooth, smooth top. Makes it ever so much easier than, than fiddling with those seam allowances and folds. So, Get that straight and obviously if you want to you pop some pin in there, pins in there to hold um, all those layers beautifully. So if we have a look on the overhead just quickly, there we go, there's my flap done and it's ready now to top stitch so you could as like I said put some pins in there in, in the pattern there's photographs with pins in um, and you're going to stitch from here all across there. Now I would keep that at about an eighth of an inch, not a quarter of an inch, there's a reason for that. Keep it at an eighth of an inch all the way around. When you get to this part where we're going to stitch around here, you could make that a quarter of an inch, you could make it a feature. So we'll start on one of the outer edges and this is where you might need to use a stiletto to hold all your layers in place to make a really nice neat job because all of this is going to be on show. Now you could increase your stitch length to three because it is it's not that structural structural um, so it, it might be nice to have, have it on a stitch length of three. It just means your stitches are a little bit clearer to see. It's just making sure that my seams are sitting inside. Like I said, a pokey to a pokey to a stiletto is really good at being your third hand. There we go. I'm happy now. Okay. 
So now I'm going about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now if you're not confident with your top stitching, um, draw a line of where you want to top stitch and just follow your line. Take your time. Notice I slowed down on the corners there. Be aware of that magnetic closure underneath your flap as well because that might stick to the bed of your machine. You'll wonder why the bag isn't moving. So as we come up to the top, just do um, one or two little back stitches, not much, otherwise it looks ugly. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt your sewing, but I just needed to tell you about my gold club. If you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you will see a page that says sign up gold. And that's where you can first of all try the 14 day free trial period, or you can just sign up straight away and cut, cut to the quick. You get two full concise patterns every month with two full videos. You also get a mid month madness pattern that I'll Catherine makes for us, plus a video to accompany that as well. You also get all the Making It Monday projects for that current month as well for your membership. We have TV celebrity guests every month talking to us about their sewing journeys or just what they get up to in their crafting lives. And it's people that you know that are on your TV screens. We also do personal challenges every month as well. For 2022, we're doing a 12 month journal page, all stitching. And then we're raising money for children in need also with a bear project every month, not a pudsy bear, a different sort of bear. So if you join the Gold Club, you really won't regret it. You do need to join the Facebook page to get full advantage of being a Gold member. Listen, I have just finished a Facebook Live with my lovely ladies in the group on Facebook and we have just made this fabulous scrappy patchy scarf. And those are the sort of things that we do just on an ad hoc basis. It's a great place to be. Come on, sign up and join us. Let's cut my threads. There we go. Lovely. Could do with a really good press, mind you, but that all these things do do work better with a press. So there we are. So there's the the flap of our bag done. I mean, that's um, that's probably the most complicated thing of the whole bag. So what we need to do now is to actually mark on one of our outer pieces and there is a mark on the pattern where this is um, a line going across your bag first of all fold it in half and give it a little nick so you know that that little notch that you've just cut is your center please don't do that with this but you could fold it in half and mark it with a heat erasable pen There we are. So I know where that half is now because I've marked it on on that halfway mark where I've where I folded. I've just marked. So with your pattern, you will have a marker. This is my mock up pattern. And just lay your pattern over the top and fold it. So like I said, this is this is my mock up pattern. So you're going to just mark that line. And what you're going to do is just draw a line there. Now, you may not see this with the green. I'll, I'll see it because I'm sit sitting over the top of it, but you might not. So let's take that away. If I was to measure that, It is uh, one and three quarter inches from that top line there. And then all you need to do is where you've got that notch, if you can see that notch just there, you can line up your ruler, draw a little mark so you know that's the absolute center there, just here. And then you can put your bag flap over the top. So there's my mark there. There's my mark there and I'm placing that exactly on the line and that's how it looks. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try, there's a lot of layers now, 
pop a pin in just to hold that in the right place. So I'm using my longer Taylor Seville pins. So that's that's held in place. So if you remember, I said to you, um, make this line about an eighth of an inch on your flap. Now I want you to stitch a quarter of an inch um, on that flap. So you've got a kind of like a double line going on there. And that's what's going to hold your flap in place. So this time we want to make it really strong. So we're going to do a couple of stitches and then we're going to go back. Then we'll go a couple of stitches forward again and we'll go back. But don't make this ugly. So what I mean by that is I don't want you to make great big long lines of stitching. I just want you to do a couple of stitches. Um, it's just that security because this is this is the, your bag flap and it's going to be used a lot so we come back again and again so don't worry that you're doing an extra security stitch there now let me show you on that camera how that looks and you see I've got threads to cut but I've made that second line going across here and I've done a nice lot of back stitching there because that is our flap. We want that to be really, really secure. Good. Okay, so now we've done quite a lot of this bag already, can you believe? But we're going to now actually stitch the whole thing together. Now, I don't want you to worry at all about the magnetic closure. That's something that we do almost last. So where we've got that piece that we've just created, I now want you to get the other piece. There we are. And I want you to do right sides together. <laughs> Make sure we go the right way around. That's, that's the right way around for you. <laughs> and we're going to stitch down both sides, right and left, and across the bottom. And then we're going to box our bottoms. So I'll just do that. Um, make sure that you have a little back stitch there. There we go. I must get this set up for a back stitch actually. <laughs> it would be so much easier. Um, quarter of an inch all the way down. In fact, let's do that. There we go. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, there we go does it itself. So we're just going to do that bottom seam now. Just make sure all your raw edges are together nice and strong. Nice little reverse stitch just to hold. And then the side. Like I say, just make sure all your edges are together. Now the inside of the, the bag, the lining part, it doesn't have um, a pocket. It has, oh there, I did want to do a back stitch. I'm just going to do a little back stitch there. Um, oh, that's fine. Um, it doesn't have a pocket, so you might want to add a pocket into this. So now I've done my my bottom, my two sides, I'm just going to box. So I'm popping my hand inside and I'm just going to bring those the side seam and the bottom seam together. Now you'll find it because of the stiffening that we've used, so two layers of, um, I've used H250 as usual, um, you'll find it quite tricky to, to fold it. It's, it's not easy, let's put it that way. This is okay, it's just, um, let's get that, there we are. I just want to do that again. There we are. <laughs> oh dear, I will learn this machine one day. So, um, yeah, so it will be a little bit stiff, I suppose, and, and not 
flexible it's not like using a wadding it's got quite a bit of body to it so you might fight with it a bit it's not as bad as using foam I think foam is just uh, uh, quite quite awkward sometimes for the stitching but but it does a terrific job okay so make sure that you nest your seams that way you'll get the perfect perfect point if you like when you when you um open up your bag your your bottom and your side seam it will look will look gorgeous so let's just turn that through poke out all your corners there we go okay that's lovely so now we've got um, the main bones of our bag but the next thing we need to do are the little tabs so I've got those ready to to do so they're just a case of um, stabilizing with a soft stabilizer in actual fact you don't have to stabilize these at all because where they're going to go there's going to be a lot going on your machine may not be able to cope with all of those layers so um, I would perhaps leave the stabilizer out or try it beforehand see how you get on it's only a little scrap of fabric and for each one of those you're folding the one of the edges sorry two of the edges to the middle um, and then you're going to um, fold again so you've got a one inch strap and you're just going to top stitch all the way around even though there's a raw edge you can still go over top stitching you're not going to see any of it so a nice bold top stitch make it a feature be brave and uh, yeah it'll look amazing and of course if you're using um, matching thread you'll hardly notice especially if you're using quite a busy fabric like me so just chop our ends so if we have a look on the side camera there's our two tabs done so what you need to do now is thread your d-ring through fold it in half like that <laughs> there we are and just uh, stitch the ends of that so you're just basting those together you're not doing anything fancy so let's just switch our back stitch off so it's just a baste but you'll find at this point whether you think your fabric there's going to be too many layers for your machine all machines are different you know um, obviously my the machines I use are kind of semi-industrial so I, I try to gear this just for the regular domestic machine um, so my advice is, is perhaps not to stabilise these tabs. So you're reducing the amount of layers your machine has to go through. But like I say, just give it a little test. So snip all your ends, make them super neat. And if we go to the overhead now, I want you to have a little look as to where we're putting these tabs. So um, I'll put the bag on the side, that would perhaps be easiest. So they're going on the side seams, so where the side seams come up, I could do some cutting some threads there, just make sure that your seams are lying flat inside and your tab is going right in the centre. So if I lift that up, you can see that it go, it's going right in the centre. Let's just pop a clip in there. There we go. So you can see what that looks like now. So you're doing the same the other side. Make sure your seam is flat. It just helps. It's just nice to have everything going the same way. It's not, it's not life-threatening if you don't. <laughs> and there's the other side. So there's my seam and there's my, my tab. And I'm going to baste that on there so I don't have to think about those anymore. And um, I'm going to take the arm off my machine. And I'm going to base this on the inside. No, I'm going to base it on the outside. <laughs> I'm going to thread this through. I'm so not used to having a, um, a free arm on my machine. So again, an eight, about an eighth of an inch. And I'm going about a half an inch before my tab, over my tab, and a half an inch um, after. Let me show you on the side camera. 
So there's my end stitching there, there's my start stitching there. So you can see it's gone all the way across. And then the same the other side. And it kind of gives you, your machine a bit of a run up <laughs> if it needs to. We have got gadgets that always help with these sort of things. Uh, sometimes it's just quicker to do it ourselves. Um, and there's the other side there. So it looks lovely and neat, doesn't it? Good. So let's get all our bits and bobs out of the way. So the next thing we need to do is to make the channels. Now the channels are going on the outer bag. So they're going on the bag as it stands now. Um, it'll all get caught in the lining. So you have um, four of these, four of these channels. You're going to put right sides together and you're going to stitch the short ends of both pairs. So if we do right sides together, we're going to stitch this end here and this end here. We're going to turn it through and press, but I'll show you that bit um, in, a, in a second so you can see exactly what I've done. Let's pop that back on. So you can see the only difficult part for all of this is the, the bag flap because we have that integral um, pocket with the zip. Very, um, it's a very nice thing to do, but you might find it just too much for you. So you can always leave that out. Uh, it doesn't detract from the attractiveness of the bag. So again, our second pair, just the two short ends. And we're just going a quarter of an inch seam allowance across both short ends. And then we're going to turn through and press. And I'll show you what that looks like. So there's my channels with both short ends stitched. And all we're going to do is turn it through. So turn it through and just finger press those short ends, but we will press them properly in a second. And keep those seams on each end like that. So if we go to the overhead now, you can see what we're going to do is we're going to press these two seams. Now I always open up and just press those seams so they're really lovely so they're not, um, <coughs> excuse me, they're not too, uh, sort of, they can fold in on themselves and then you're going to press them together like that so it makes it really neat. Okay and then you're going to press in half. So what I suggest you do is make sure that all your layers are together, that your raw edges are all together. Get your fingers to go into the middle and push in and make sure that all of your edges are sitting on top of each other. It's very easy to, to fold this over and these not match. So just take a moment, push your fingers in there and make sure that they uh, that all of your edges are together and then what we're going to do you don't you don't need to press that that's that's fine exactly as it is but what we will do is pop it under the machine and just base along there to hold all those layers together so we're just going to base those two long seams or raw edges together um, uh, usually about an eighth of an inch. You can increase your stitch length if you want to. The main thing is to make sure that all of your layers are sitting exactly on top of each other. So if you haven't pinned or clipped these two together, then <clears throat> just pop your finger in the layers just to make sure that you have got four raw edges sitting on top of each other. <clears throat> So there's one channel done. So we'll do the same with the other. So if you start off well, then it'll all go smoothly all the way along. <clears throat> to pop your fingers in all of the layers. and just do a little bit at a time. <clears throat> okay. 
so that's our two channels done so you might want to trim all your threads just make sure they're nice and neat <clears throat> and then we're going to pop them onto the outer bag that we've just created and they go from seam to seam so this will fit on one side seam and this will fit on the other side seam so if we bring the bag in and this is where it can start to get a little bulky here but you should be fine so I'm just going to place my channels right on that side seam I'll show you in a second what that looks like and clip all the way around and I I tend to place these uh, ends in the right place first and then <clears throat> they sit nicely all the way around there we go that's better and if you want to find the middle of your channel you've already made the middle of your back piece so if you want to find the middles of all your pieces your fronts your channels just so everything lines up then then please do that and then place the other one on so again I would get your sides to be the right so your two ends are sitting pretty much together at the sides so let me do that <clears throat> there we go so when we look at it now and you see the channel going across the front here and at the side you have the two pieces pretty much all almost meeting that's only because I've clipped it so try and get them just to meet maybe an eighth of an inch apart if you feel you need to leave a little bit of a gap maybe what you want to do is uh, find the middles and stitch from the middles out and then you know they're all going to be sitting nicely but I kind of trust uh, trust the pattern and then we're going to actually again base these on so again I'm going to take my table off <clears throat> so we're not doing a quarter of an inch so again slide this under and I'm starting in the middle because I can <laughs> so you're, you're kind of following the stitches that you did when you put the channels together just before so now we're coming up to the side seams and like I said to you you might find this quite bulky for your machine in which case take your time there's absolutely no rush whatsoever and just perhaps test this out on fabric before you commit yourself but a lot of machine, domestic machines will go through all those layers if you think if you were going to make a pair of curtains and all the fabric that you need and the tape and the layers that you need for curtains and, and that's using upholstery fabric or curtain weight fabric um, there's no reason why your machine can't go through this but it, de it does depend on your machine it, I you know, seriously it does so just coming round now to the other side just bringing up my ends so they're not too bad <laughs> not quite meeting but they're not too bad um, and then go over all your layers there we go okay so there's my let me put that back on there so there's my um channels in place now you can see if i lift them up you can see that they're actually in place and on the sides they don't look too bad <laughs> going over the that center seam line there so that's the the main bag of the du um, done so all we need to do really now is repeat a few little steps with our lining so right sides together we're coming down the sides Uh, 
when we get to the bottom the bottom seam we're stitching about I would say um, about an inch and a half leave a fairly decent turning gap <coughs> and then obviously an inch, <laughs> an inch and a half on the other side as well and then up the side seams and like I say this doesn't have an internal pocket but you could put one in if you wanted to So now we just box the bottoms like we did before so you're just bringing out those inner points so you're just getting hold of um, one either side let's go in from the top might be easier so you're pinching those inner corners and you're just stitching across quarter of an inch again so this time we will do um, because I've still got my my, my uh, automatic thread cutter on there so let's just switch that off so you're just going point to point make it nice and strong with a back stitch you don't have to worry so much about matching your seams nesting your seams and making a beautiful uh, point if you like but obviously do your best That's it. <laughs> okay so there's our lining done and we've boxed out the the corners there beautiful so now we're just going to slip the lining onto the outer of the bag just pop that flap down so it stays out of the way let's pop that in come on that's it i do find it easier to do it this way even though I'm having a little bit of a struggle so now we're lining up the side seams of our bags the outer and the lining so forget about all those layers that you've got going on with the um, tab and the channels just line up the seams um, and then you know that the bag is perfectly positioned and this time we're going to do a nice big quarter of an inch when I say big <laughs> a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around and if you want to put more clips into hold then please do but that should fit beautifully inside there so we've got the lining and the outer bag right sides together all you can see now is the the lining that's the inside of the outer bag we're going all the way around <clears throat> so again we just remove the table slipping that underneath I start from the middle and it just sits nicely straight away on the machine. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. Let's get my clips out of the way. All the way round. Just make sure your raw edges are all sitting nicely on top of each other. Again, you're coming up to that really bulky bit. I don't want you to fret about it now because if your machine went over all the other layers it will go over this because the lining is only one layer of fabric but just take your time you can see I slowed my machine right down just to make sure that the needle goes through all the layers <clears throat> and that it's a, it's a happy little machine all the way around and when we come to that bulky bit just take your time. Just make sure my seams are lying still in the same way. Take your time. And then we're on the home straight. Okay. 
Lovely. So let's put the table back on again. <clears throat> it does make a huge difference having that facility. So there we've gone all the way around. So now we just want to, to pull it through. Um, you might find that you need to open up your turning gap a bit more because this is quite a bulky bag really. Yeah, it's all that fabric stabiliser we've used. Um, <clears throat> and this is the part where you, if you've pressed your, your pieces, you'll think, why did I bother? <laughs> but it is, uh, it is worth it to press anyway. So there we are, wasn't too bad, was it? So let's just quickly get that all back into shape again. And you will need to give it a press. So while we've got it like this, <laughs> let's pop the lining in so it looks a little bit neater. Um, all of this will need to be pressed. While we've got it like this, we can put our we can put our cord in, but the main thing is to is to for you to find out where your magnetic closure is going to go. Now I think I would like to put my cord in first and then gather it up because that makes a bulk here with the cord. So what we'll do is we'll give this a quick iron, then we'll thread the cord through. Now we need to trim the cord back. We don't really want it to be very long. Um, now I do suggest you give this a, a proper um, damp press. So a pressing cloth, steam, just to make sure everything is sitting where it should be. Um, because you've got lots of layers going on. So we'll give that a quick, just for the time being, and then I'll do this properly a little later. There we go. Just keep moving it around. There we go. Super. Okay. Now I've cut my cord um, to the width of the bag plus about uh, 12 inches just to give me a little bit of leeway. So with our cord, which is here, um, if you've got a, a, a bod bodkin or something like that then you know how to use that. I'm just using a very big safety pin. We're going in from one end of a channel, doesn't matter which. And we're going to just thread it all the way through. So if you have a look on the overhead, I'm just taking it from one side to another. And then as we come up to the other side where the D-ring is, all I'm going to do is continue in the second channel all the way along. So you want a thin cord, this is I suppose the width of it is about a quarter inch. Um, or, a, or a nice ribbon or tape, that sort of thing. Okay, so you can see on the overhead that I've gone all the way around. This is um, one end here and there's my two short ends there. So keep them as they are like that for the moment. And then with our other piece, pop your safety pin in. I always go a little bit further down in case the, the, the cord splits, so I always go about an inch down. And then where you've got the end with the, the loop, you're going to start from that end. And although you've got two pieces of cord going through your channels, it should be absolutely fine. So just thread all the way through. And then when you get to the other side, you're just continuing. So as the safety pin or whatever you're using comes out, pop it back in again. And if you have a, a bodkin, especially for this job, brilliant. I have never, ever had one. I always find this method works for me. It's not expensive either, which is nice. <gasps> okay, so we're... Brought it, we've brought the um, other end through. So now we've got our long pieces of cord, but I don't actually want them to be that long. I absolutely don't want all of this 
um, at all. So I'm going to cut them back to about two inches on each end. So I'm not I'm not measuring, but you obviously you can. <laughs> so you've got two little bits of cord sticking out just like that. So if we look on the overhead, there we are, you can see two little bits of cord. And we want to make um, little tabs to go on the end. So um, if I show you on the overhead, you want to make a little tab that sits, will end up looking like that, that the cord will actually slot into like that and we can stitch it on. So to make that, all you need is a three inch square, it's all in the pattern, your three inch square, you're folding in half, getting a crease and then you're bringing your long edges up to the center we don't really have long edges but the outer edges coming up to the center like that and then you're folding that like so so your two raw edges are meeting in the middle and then you're going to do the same on this these two edges um, you can make a center fold if you want to and do a crease and then you're going to just bring those raw edges up and all the, it will all want to move so you could use quilting tape if you want to hold all of these um, in place just got to flip it around bring the raw edges in like that give it a press and then that gives us the little tab to put on the ends of our cord um, obviously you need to cut off those little little threads there so while that's like that all we're going to do is to pop our cord in between so if you can get keep them straight that's good that's a bonus point <laughs> it I don't think it matters too much by the time you've gathered it all up and just pull just pull your cord so you've got a little bit more of a length going on there and just tuck your uh, ends of your cord in and you can clip it or pin it just to hold it in place like that and I will just snip those little raw edges little threads there so that's what it looks like and we're going to stitch around those three sides. I mean, you can stitch all four sides if you want to. It's kind of like anything just to hold that in place. So I'm going to pop that under the machine. Now you might find this a little bit tricky because obviously you've got bag, you've got cord, lots going on. So just, as always, just take your time. You might want to get your glue out and glue all of these. Try and keep it as neat as you can. I know it's difficult because we've got lots of little bits going on. Lots of little layers. Let's just try and move that along a little bit. There we go. And I might as well go around all four sides. One more stitch. It's always one more stitch, isn't it? And sometimes, just, just like my machine, it'll get stuck on that point because there's nothing for the feed dogs to grab hold of and there's nothing for your presser foot to feed through. And a uh, little back stitch there just to finish it off. So if we look on the side camera, I'll keep it on there and then I'll show you what I've done. Probably could do some cutting of some more threads, but there we are. That's not a, not a bad job. Um, and obviously if you want to make them smaller, make them smaller, but I quite like them like that. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. So if we keep where, if you keep where you are just for a moment, pull that out. So you, you've got a little bit more length to play with. Try and keep your cord kind of you know in the right place because it stops it from twisting and then you're going to fold your little rectangle around your cord sort of locking it in like that if I get my fingers out of the way I'll put a clip there so it'll hold oops there we go 
and you're just now going to stitch around well stitch around all four sides you might as well it just makes it all the more secure and if your needle if it doesn't want to feed through it's like I said to, to you just before it's only because there's no fabric there because we've got we're working on such tiny pieces now there's nothing for the feed dogs to get hold of that's all nothing wrong with your machine or you come to that so just give it a little bit of encouragement try and keep all your ends in because that little end has just decided to to poke out a bit let's just try and get that there we go it's not too bad and where we started I'm just going to do a little back stitch and then just cut my threads and as long as you've stitched through the cord a little bit of a bird's nest underneath there but I'll sort that out later as long as you stitch through the cord here and make sure that's secure you'll, you'll be fine so <laughs> Now we're, uh, we're absolutely rocking and rolling here now. So your tabs can now pull those cords up. Now I don't suggest you pull it as tight as I've just done. I, I prefer if you keep it kind of almost the width of the bag or the width of your flap. So there's your flap coming over like that. And I said to you a little while ago, just make sure also that you don't put your magnetic closure in until this last bit, because what I want you to do is mark where you think it should go. Make sure it's central and make sure that it's, um, you know, that, that everything is sitting straight and then you can go in from the lining. So if I was to put this on its side, like I said, just make sure that you're happy with everything. So um, I think I'm going to be happy with it there. Um, and also to draw up your cord. So although I haven't drawn mine up, it's good to do that. So let's just do that because it does take some of the bulk. But I want to, the main thing is to make sure it's central. So when you bring all this over... I think it should go about here. So if I put a little mark there, you might not be able to see that little mark, but it's just there. When I open this up, I want you to have a look. That's not central. That is not lined up with that. So I'm just going to get my ruler and make sure that it goes in the right place. I'm just shifting that along a little bit to there. Because I'm using heat erasable pen, then none of these marks will show. So I just get my gadgets and gizmos. I've got my lining. I haven't done my turning gap yet, and that's obviously deliberate. I'm going to put my mat inside my bag. So it protects my bag. You could use a really nice thick piece of cardboard. We'll go in. There we are. And make your hole. There we go. So do protect your bag, otherwise you're going to go all the way through. So this time we're putting the fat side of our magnetic closure on the front. Popping the legs through, getting the other piece. Yeah, and this is this is very easy to see. There's nothing complicated about this at all. And then just opening up those legs on your magnetic closure. Oh, make sure they're nice and flat. Get a little hammer if you need to, or the back of your scissors. Um, and then you can stitch your turning gap because now this is all nicely in place. Just pull up your, your drawstrings and what I would do is pop them inside your bag and then your bag can close. So let's just close that up. Um, like I say, it probably needs, well it does need a jolly good press. So give it a little fluff up. Once you, once you have finished and you press it, 
um, it kind of st it does actually kind of stay in shape. Let's do that again. There we go. Oh, this is just gorgeous. And then of course we've got our handles to attach to either side. You can use a chain, like I said, or I'll put I'll put a, a, a link to these in my Amazon shop. And there we are. There's our little bag made. It looks really cool, doesn't it? Let's bring the other one in. So we've got one that's very evening-y. Um, actually, just for reference, my magnetic closures are exactly two inches down from the top of the channel down onto the bag. So two inches from here down. So just as a reference. So if you don't want to do what I did, which I, I, it's perfectly fine to do it that way. This might be a better way. So, there we are. Isn't they, I think they're absolutely fabulous. I really love them. And then for a finishing touch, I've got myself some handmade by little tabs and they could go on the front like that or we can put it on there. So you could get treat yourself to some handmade little tabs and, and stitch those on. I might just do that. So there we are. So there is Julie. So the only complication is that zip pocket here. Um, and it isn't really complicated. You just got to make sure that your zip teeth are central to your opening. Um, then, then you're good to go. Um, and you don't have to stitch the upper and lower pockets in place. You could just top stitch it straight from the get go. Um, but it's just a, sort of like a bit of basting just to help you. So um, there is Julie. I hope you love her. She's really, really perfect now for um, the spring weather coming up um, to take out with you maybe on a little shopping trip. And maybe you're going out lunch with the girls. I think this would be a gorgeous make to take with you. And um, I hope you make loads. <laughs>